Hi, it's Martin Perhiniak, and welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. Today, I'm going to show you a couple of tricks with layer styles. The first feature is only available in Photoshop CS6, but don't worry if you use previous versions because there's something else here that I would like to show and which also can save you a lot of time. So first of all, this is a website that I've been working on and most of the times if I want to have rollover effects, I use layer styles. So as you can see he here I have my buttons. And the first one is contact. Now if I turn this effect on and off, you can see that's the normal state of the button and when I have the effect on, that's the rollover state. So this is how I imagined it. Now I can move this effect easily from one layer to the other by just simply dragging it and then place it on the other layer and there again I can see with and without. Before Photoshop CS6 I had to not just move but copy this effect onto all the buttons. By holding down Alt or Option you can copy a um, layer style. So now I have it on both buttons and now I can turn it on and off separately on each of them. And this is really important because when you want to save this website, you want to save both versions for these image elements. So you want to save it with the normal and the rollover state. The great thing in Photoshop CS6 is that now we can use layer styles on layer groups. So instead of having it on each of these uh, layers inside this group called buttons, I can just simply, let me delete one of them, so I can just simply drag and drop the layer style from the layer onto the layer group. Okay, and now as you can see, it will be applied to all of the buttons at the same time. So that saves a lot of time. If I turn this off, that's the normal state for all of them. If I turn it on, that's the rollover state for all of them. It also saves a lot of time if I want to change the, the effect itself because then it will update on all of these at the same time. So now if I select the color and let's just say I want a deeper blue, blue color, I can easily change it. And that's how simple you can access all the layers at the same time. And as I said, this is a Photoshop CS6 only feature, but let me show you another one which you can do in previous versions as well, and which can also save you a lot of time. So let me go to another, my all time favorite example with this Roman soldier. Here, as you can see, I have the original layer here at the bottom with two adjustment layers. Let me turn off this layer here on the top, just to make sure you understand what I've done here. So I have the image, I have a black and white adjustment with a mask which will uh, turn everything uh, to black and white apart from the soldier because I have a mask which makes sure that the soldier has its original colors and then I have a vignette effect on the image just to make it a bit more dramatic and then I have the soldier on a separate layer with an outer glow layer style. If I turn, on, uh, turn that off you can hardly see any difference. It's a bit more colorful, the soldier on this separate layer. And it's important that on that layer, as you can see, I have transparency, okay? Because that's what I need for the outer glow effect to work. I could have used masking, but in this case it was easier because you will see I'm going to use another mask and I just don't want to over complicate it for you. So I have a cutout version of the soldier with this effect outer glow. I can show you the effect if I go into double click on the layer style. Here I can uh, show you outer glow and it's a red color and with a spread and the size set to these numbers. So now I click on OK and what I would like to achieve with this is to have this glow gradually fading out from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Normally what I would do, because I also have the image in the background, I can just simply mask this whole image out. So I can create a mask and then use the gradient tool set to black to white and click from the bottom to the top and drag a line like that. You can see it doesn't work or it doesn't work the way we want it to make it work because now 
we must out the soldier and not the effect. So the effect is still following the edges of this layer. So if I turn off all the other layers by option or alt clicking on the eye icon here, you can see the layer style is still following the edges of the, the original layer. So what can we do with this? There's a very useful feature. If you go into the effects, double click on effects, and here turn on layer mask hides effects. With that turned on, the layer mask that we created will not only hide the layer content itself, but it will also affect the layer style. So now if I click on OK and turn off the mask by shift clicking on the mask, we can see that was the original layer with the layer style. And then if I use that gradient mask on it, I can hide both the layer style and the image. So once again, if I go back to effects and I turn this option off, which is by default off, this is what happens. Okay. And if I turn it on, this is what I can achieve. So let me show you now with the uh, background. So if I have everything on and I turn that layer off and on, I only have that glow on the top of the soldier and not all around him. This is a very subtle change, but can be very useful sometimes. And just to make sure you understand what I've done there, I'm going to use a simple example, a circle, which I'm going to just color red. So let me change the color using a keyboard shortcut we've learned in a previous video. Alter option backspace by using the foreground color to fill in this uh, vector shape. And then I'm going to add for this vector shape, a drop shadow so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to increase the size and spread just to make sure you can see it okay so there's my uh, circle and if I add a mask onto this uh, layer and I'm going to use a black color and a brush to draw into this uh, shape you can see even though I drew over it let me turn off everything else in the background we still see the drop shadow even though I delete it from it. And only if I delete enough, I can start to see that the drop shadow will also disappear. Okay, but let me go back to the effects and then turn on layer mask hides effects. And you can see it's a completely different behavior now because we are hiding the effect as well with the mask, not just the layer. So if I draw over it, I can easily affect the mask and also the layer, but my masking will be much more precise and effective on the layer style itself. So let me just clear this layer mask and show you again. Now that I have that option on, the one that I showed you, so layer mask hides effects, I can just simply use the mask and draw into it and clearly I affect both the content and the mask. So that's all I wanted to show about layer styles. This is a fairly simple concept using layer styles, but as you can see, in CS6 we have a really cool new feature for them. And if you dig a bit deeper into the options under the effects panel and blending options, you can come up with some interesting combinations. By the way, I just want to point out that this feature also works for vector masks, so not just for layer masks. But that's all for today, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and make sure you join me next time, because I'm going to share some similar features with you in the next video as well. Thanks a lot for your attention, and see you next time.